How do you go from this to this? Hi, I'm Darren. I'm often asked, how good are studio horns? So I thought I'd write a piece of music and let you judge for yourself. So what I've done here is I've got drummer and some live percussion. Here's the horns, which I'll come back to in a minute. Live bass and live guitar. So I want to show you how I've set everything up. Five part ensemble writing, two trumpets, tenor sax, trombone, and baritone sax. Tenor sax and baritone sax is playing a riff and trumpets and trombones are playing melody lines and stabs. To set the instruments up themselves, I'm using single instruments rather than sections. I've done this because it allows me to control the ensemble that I'm using. I've set each instrument up in exactly the same way. Monophonic, because of course it's a horn section, so each player will only be playing one note at a time. Dynamics via CC, so I can use the mod wheel to create some dynamic and volume variation and everything else, the drop down parameters section and the section on the right here with humanized volume, all of that stuff is left as it was when I first loaded the plugin up. I am making use of the articulation sets. This is a really handy feature with studio horns and studio strings. If you don't know what articulation sets are, it's really simple and straightforward. Once you load the instrument in, you go to the track drop down menu and you can select the different articulation sets for studio horns and studio strings. So in this example, it would be uh, studio trumpet one. You set studio trumpet one up, and when you pencil in a note, you can see the articulation that comes up. Okay, so before we get started, let's look at some basic concepts of writing parts for studio horns. So I've taken a snippet from the arrangement. and I'm going to create a five part solly using the melody line as an example. In the track I've treated this line in a different way but let's look at it from the basic concept of part writing. So an easy way to write is to take your melody and hang harmonized notes or chords below that melody. So what's a five part solly? It's four note chords, usually sevenths, with the melody doubled an octave below so you end up with five harmonized voices close together. Okay, so the first thing to think about is the register of each instrument. And each instrument generally sounds strongest in the middle of its range. At the outer range, they can end up being clearer and brighter, fuller and warmer, or even weaker and harder to play for the musician. So it's important you consider what the instrument is capable of and how it sounds when voicing your parts. It's particularly important with software instruments because they tend to sound most unnatural in the weakest part of their register. If you want to convince a listener, it's often best not to expose it on its own or at its weakest points. That's why in my track I'm using other instruments to mask and surround the horns. Doesn't mean you can't hear them, just means the weaknesses are concealed. In the actual track, the trumpets are in their higher register, but for this example, and to make the other voices work better in their range, I'm going to drop the lead line an octave, then I'll copy the lead line down an octave, and drop the other notes below the lead melody as basic seventh chords. Hence you end up with four note chords 
and the fifth note is the melody dropped an octave. So I'm going to go ahead and stick in a bunch of seventh chords to this melody. Now it sounds fine, but what we can do is we can make this sound much more interesting by adding something called harmonic tensions. So I'm going to go to the part here where I've actually written this out across the different instruments and I'm going to talk you through this and then I'm going to play you the example. So what we've got here is you'll notice that the chords are slightly different. Our E minor chord is no longer just a straightforward E minor 7. It now has the notes E, G, A, D and E. So there are some notes in there that come from our E minor 7 chords and other notes that aren't. So what we're looking at here is what we call harmonic tensions. Now harmonic tensions are notes that are extended beyond your basic seventh chord. So let me give you an example. An E minor 7 chord would be E, G, B and D and then our available tensions, an F sharp, an A and a C sharp. So there are our available tensions, the 9, the 11 and the 13. When we write what we call diatonically within the key, we have certain tensions that work better than others. So for example, on this E chord here, this E minor 7, the tensions that I have available that I can use and I know they will work will be tension, what we call tension 9 and tension 11. Now that would be an F sharp and an A. And you can see what I've done is I've changed the middle note here to an A. So we've got the 7th is there, the minor 3rd is there, and where I had a B, I move that B to an A. So let's take a look at the next chord, the G7. Now G7 is G, B, D, F, and then our available tensions are A, C, and E. So there's our available tensions. Now commonly what happens with a dominant chord is there are lots of tensions that you can use, but in this case I flattened the fifth, so what we end up with is a G7 flat 5 chord. I've gone ahead and I've written the other tensions in here, so the A minor 7, the tensions that I could use would be a 9 or an 11, and in this case I've gone for tension 11, which is a D, that one there. Now the other thing I want you to notice is how these lines move up in this fashion here, so you can see that there are no notes doubling over and that gives for the player a really nice line to play. There's lots and lots of different techniques that you can use but in this case I'm writing everything so it's kind of going in the same direction and this is what it sounds like. Let's do that one more time. Now by using those tensions it makes the line much more interesting. Now with this five part writing there's lots of different things that you could do. For example one would be just to drop the second line, we call it drop two. So what I could do here is, see I've highlighted the second melody line, I'm going to drop it down. We might not actually get all the notes here because of course you'd put it in a different instrument. Uh, and this is what it sounds like with drop two and you can see what I've done is I've created a gap now it's not quite as close as it was before. So you get a completely different tonal character and there's lots of different drop writing that you can actually do with this. I hope you found this useful and that it will give you some basic ideas of how to make studio horns sound more realistic by carefully choosing and arranging your voices so that they are in a register that works for each instrument. In the next video I'm going to take a different approach and use studio horns to hold down a riff and accent chords and melodies with the same five part ensemble, but so that they complement the other instruments in the arrangement. Well I hope you found that helpful, if you have any questions hit me up in the comment box and I'll get back to you. Also if you like this video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button right now so you never miss a video from me. I'll see you soon and thanks for watching.